Hi, my name is Liz Hiller with NACE, and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Job X, a custom compliant and paperless student employment and FWS solution, including government forms. We encourage you to actively participate in the chat and please post questions in the Q&A. It is my pleasure to introduce Tage Haynes, CEO, NextGen Web Solutions. Take it away, Tage. Thank you, uh, Liz. Can everyone hear me? I don't know. Liz, can you hear me? Just want to make yes, sure. Yes, awesome. I can hear you. All right. Well, welcome everyone on a Friday. And I um, know that your time is super valuable. So we're going to jump right in. The format I've got planned for today's session is just a handful of slides. And then we'll jump right into a live demo of JobX and then also give you a little um, highlight of Timesheet X which for those of you who are in the business of managing student employment and federal work study understand um, the big uh, compliance need when managing timesheet. So we'll give you a little exposure to timesheet X that can be purchased with uh, JobX or separately on its own as well. Um, and as Ms. Liz had mentioned, um, following the completion of my demo, we'll have about 10 minutes um, available to answer any questions. So put those in that Q&A area and I'll be sure to try to jump on them. Um, and then afterwards, uh, we will post not only the recording, but this PowerPoint that I'll be reviewing because the PowerPoint, I'm only gonna go through a subset of the slides, but the remainder of the slides will, uh, essentially capture um, the different pieces of information we covered in the demo. So let's uh, get it going. Hold on one second. All right, just a quick uh, overview of who NextGen is. Um, we are a efficiency technology solutions provider exclusively in the higher ed marketplace. We do not wish to fracture our focus. We expect that our employees are uh, experts in each of the different areas that our four soon to be five products serve. Um, they are JobX, TimesheetX, and Dynamic Form Scholarship Manager and Dynamic Verification. Uh, today, we'll spend most of our time on JobX. We will show you dynamic forms that is leveraged when we are offering a paperless onboarding form solution within the higher life cycle of JobX. Um, with these products serve over 800 colleges uh, nationwide. And these are just kind of some examples of some of our customers when uh, the world is dealing with the hackers out there that um, are causing intrusions into very uh, esteemed servers like uh, Princeton or a Yale or a Duke and all of those. Uh, we are um, a longtime partner with these well-known schools. We've had no incidents whatsoever. So hopefully that gives you a sense of comfort. Um, I wanted to, before I get into this demonstration, kind of talk about a real customer experience. And we have um, numerous uh, case studies like this one that we can share, but the, um, a little bit about JobX and TimesheetX and how we've helped schools across the nation be more efficient be more compliant and bring in, uh, introduce huge cost savings. So the largest school in Tennessee, UT Knox, um, back in 2017 had a pretty invasive federal work study program review. Um, Department of Ed is doing this on a regular basis, rightfully so. They're trying to ensure that those federal dollars are being spent eff uh, effectively and that all of the regulations around those programs are being um, followed. Uh, this particular school at the time has grown um, quite a bit since 2017, but this was about the size of their program. Um, they had five auditors that came in. One spent 40 hours alone on federal work study. They were not expecting that. Um, uh, they received numeral, numerous findings, but four were pretty severe. And as many of you on this line know who might be responsible for federal work study, if you have those violations, it could um, you could lose some of your funding or all. 
So um, prior to implementing JobX and TimesheetX, they were found to have allowed kids to be working when they're supposed to be in class, exceeding 20 hours or whatever your thresholds might be of max hours that can be worked in a week. They were found to be working when their award balances uh, were exceeded, their SAP status was unsatisfactory, um, when they were working less than cre six credit hours perhaps in the fall and below three credit hours in the summer, and even found to be working when they didn't have an I-9 in place. And so these two products, once implemented, um, got them out of completely out of hot water and resolved those issues. So not only did it bring um, them a much more improved uh, compliance, but it also brought them a wealth of efficiency. So they were extremely paper um, intensive on their job postings, their application management, and their hires. Um, and so afterwards, we will we were able to come in and um, systematically now they do all of their employment eligibility checks um, without any human involvement. So that takes all that work off of your on-campus and off-campus supervisors that might be community service, America Reads, all those things. So we offer custom uh, business rules to be set up at time of when they're applying, at time of when they're being considered to be hired. And then also, if you were in, interested in using Timesheet X, we uh, leverage those employment eligibility checks when they're entering time as well. So let's talk about their resource savings. So as you can see over on the left, they had a good number of staff hours, student worker hours. Um, these hours uh, that we're talking about here are, you know, kind of everyone in the different departments having to look up and see that they are eligible before they hire them, um, director hours and lots of paper. And we were able to reduce those extensively to the tune of about $70,000 cost savings and less than um, using it in their first year. So they hadn't even used it a full year and this is what their cost savings were. So that is super important um, when you're dealing with these frequent budget constraints. Um, we really can help you come in and um, explain uh, with tools to your management how these technology solutions can really help with those budget constraints. Um, these products are uh, very rich in data integration. Um, we support any type of single sign-on. So that's that process where we work with your IT folks to establish a behind the scenes handshake so that you can have a link to JobX or Timesheet X inside of your firewall and they will seamlessly be introduced into these products without needing to remember another ID and password. Um, we do support a great amount of data integration on the front side where we bring in those um, files or API real-time data um, telling the system which students or, and these products can serve regular hourly faculty as well. So they are not exclusive to students. Um, they can serve any type of employees, but where they started out and originated was in the student employment federal work study designed to meet those unique challenges of those businesses that other job posting career solutions may not be as robust in those areas. Um, but these product, these integrations might include, you know, who you want to be able to access these products and all of those eligibility data points. So what's their credit hours? Is their SAP status satisfactory? Um, and, and we then on that side, bring those in and leverage those when we're performing those systematic compliance checks. On the back side, we can take because we're not just a job posting and app management solution, we're also a hire engine. So we can now take approved hire data and feed it back into your res, uh, respective SIS system. So those banner schools out there, they can bring that data into the RJC or screens or into your payroll table so that you're not have, having to double entry those hires. And that can all be done seamlessly. Um, this is kind of some areas where that data integration is happening. 
on the SIS systems. Here's just a handful of them, but whatever system you use, Home Chrome as well, we customize to your data integration needs. So there's not, you know, real conform uh, file layout structures that you have to conform to. We conform to what you need. Um, on the HR payroll imaging side, you know, if you need a PATH uh, in, in a banner situation, that can all be integrated with the higher data. Oracle PeopleSoft work day. Um, we do a lot of things with Workday for the position numbers and tracking those. Um, and lots of Workday schools use us because JobX does give you that detailed job title support and multiple jobs per student, which may not be as easy to support in Workday currently. On the career services side, we can be used. A lot of our school, our job ex schools are handshake schools um, and where they're maybe not having their student employment or federal work study within career services and need a decentralized job approval process so that those federal work study jobs can get into the hands of those people um, that are responsible for checking for compliance. They can get those even if they're not situated within career services. Um, um, this is kind of as your uh, if you're a handshake user, you know that they allow you to introduce out external app tracking systems and we have some really easy ways to help get you to be able to leverage Handshake as your maybe centralized um, one-stop entry for all students to come look for jobs, but yet still get some of the robust compliance features that Handshake currently doesn't um, focus on as much. It's a great solution, um, but we are more focused, uh, you know, on some of that compliance stuff that maybe is not as high a, um, a focus on that, that platform. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to move over to the actual demo. And so what you see here is our homepage for JobX. Um, before I get into it, I find that the, doing a demonstration on this product is best where I'm logging in and out as the different roles throughout the life cycle that I will cover today. That really helps you get an idea of what the product looks like through the lens of each of the different types of roles. Roles being defined as I'm in it as an admin right now. So as an admin in JobX, you get full exposure to everything, every job that's posted on or off campus, all departments. Um, you control every one of the areas where you can customize, which you're going to hear that term from me at nauseum today. Customization is our differential. So we are not a one size fits all, and we are very economical uh, when dealing with the customization. We partner with many SIS solutions that are great partners, your PeopleSoft, your Banner, your Workday. Um, but uh, when they are needing to be customized, it's pretty expensive, whereas a lot of our customization comes with the one-time setup fee and your annual license fees. And uh, we do it uh, in many areas that I'll speak about momentarily. So on this homepage, uh, we have a content management tool with inside JobX. So if you are struggling to get IT resources to help you update your uh, different, you know, content pages. That is something that you can do within here without bothering your IT folks, as long as you're an administrator. And so that's really robust, just an extra little um, nice feature. I'm going to start in the heart of JobX and I'm going to come in. Now, uh, obviously, if you are using this product and using um, single sign on, you would not have to use this login that I'll be using back and forth as I'm logging in as different roles. But what's nice about seeing this login screen is if you have off-campus employers that you're using for community service, America Reads, or you know any of your off-campus jobs, um, we have a nice employer request sign-up process so they can ask to be able to post jobs on your site and then a nice workflow and approval so that you can vet them, make sure you've done your due diligence and then approve them or decline them if you are concerned that they are not someone you want posting on your um, uh, job board. So as you come in, you can see I've just dropped in NACE, but you are able to customize the site uh, with your look and feel of logo and such so that they feel like they've never left your site. 
Um, as an administrator, the heart of JobX Job Control Panel is really helping to make you more efficient. So how do we do that? Um, all of your jobs as an administrator can be seen on and off campus. So you can, um, you can filter to whatever department of jobs you wish on or off. Uh, you can choose to uh, look at your different job populations. So this is where we really do a ton of customization. So we on this demo site have configured, you know, eight different job type populations. But during your installation, if you were interested in JobX, we work with you to customize those so that everything you'll see in this life cycle can behave differently by these job populations. So maybe you only have on-campus federal work study, off-campus federal work study, and on-campus student employment that you might want to use this product for. We'll customize what those populations are, and then I will talk at, um, about where you can customize them. So the first thing would be the job template questions. So these questions that you see in this job posting out of the box are typically the main fields that your federal work study regulations mandate. But we then during um, installation can allow you to add unlimited fields and they can be unique for on-campus federal work study jobs versus on-campus student employment jobs and still different for faculty jobs. So we work with you to customize what fields you want. So maybe your, your campus has different campuses and you want to add a field that says campus so that when your supervisors are posting jobs, they can specify what campus this job is at. And then we will show you in a moment, we have a nice feature where you can build unlimited quick searches. So now you can build a quick search over that custom field campus and now allow for your, uh, your candidates to be able to search for just jobs on a particular campus. Not only can we customize the fields on your job template uniquely by your uh, custom job types, but we can also do the app questions. So in uh, JobX, you as administrators can come in and define your app questions unique and differently by your custom job type populations. So that if for federal work study jobs, you want to ask these questions, but for faculty jobs, those questions wouldn't make sense to ask those type of job positions, you can have that flexibility. And beyond that, so these default app questions are questions that you as administrators decide everyone who applies for these type of jobs need to answer these particular questions. But it doesn't stop there. In the actual add a job uh, wizard that it takes your supervisors or you as admins creating jobs, it's not going to just have you create this job, but it also shows you the different default questions that these candidates will have to answer when they apply for the job. And the reason they're showing the supervisors that is because during the app, uh, the job creation process, they can now add job specific questions to the application above and beyond the default questions. So that helps your employers get really best fit candidate jobs in their jobs. So if I'm a uh, athletic director and I'm hiring a volleyball coach, I might want to ask the question, how many years have you played volleyball or coached volleyball? Um, but I don't want every single person to have to answer that question, uh, just those who are applying for that job. So that can be supported. And we'll see, um, you know, kind of some of those features uh, at, as we go through the application process. Now, the other thing we do in JobX to make you far more efficient is to allow you, you can search for any aspect of your job here. So I, uh, before this created um, a job that we're going to look at um, and follow through this life cycle so I can search, um, I can use these um, boxes that you see here to manage thousands of jobs. So I'm in dining and I have hundreds of jobs and now I have um, the minimum wage changed in our state. So I can use wage filters to kind of uh, filter out all those jobs that have the minimum wage and I can use mass transactions to manage and update hundreds and thousands of jobs in seconds using these individual boxes or select all. I can change my wage. 
um, you know, in your student jobs, not so much in your faculty jobs, you're always going to have typically a start date and an end date. And so this job, as you can see, has 2022, 2023 jobs. Well, at the end of the um, term, I'm going to need to come in and modify all these jobs to be 23, 24 dates. Uh, but not to worry, you're going to be able to use this mass feature and your supervisors can do these mass features or some subset of it. So we can customize it. Some schools of ours say, you know, I don't want them to be able to do the wage changes. I want to be able to do that as an admin in mass capacity. And so we can really customize what features they as supervisors can or cannot do in a mass capacity. Contacts is the same thing. You can see hundreds of these jobs have TAGE test employer, but if TAGE test employer leaves the um, campus, this is going to allow you to replace her with someone else that's been granted access in that same department in seconds. Now, also, I wanted to direct your attention to this applications link. So now, easily in the centralized one-stop shop area, I can see all my jobs, but I can also see what applicants have applied for my jobs. So if I come into here, I can see all my applicants. And again, we're focused on efficiency. So you can get those rich con, uh, cost savings that you saw that UT Knox had with this mass feature. So you can mass uh, reach out and maybe greet the three that you wanted to interview. So you can kind of say, oh, yep, I want to greet these folks. And it has a lot of integrated email features where it's going to do some nice things. It drops the job title in there. You can control that text that you want to send out when you're ready to interview somebody at a site level so that it's consistent messaging throughout the site and with everyone that's, you know, re reviewing candidates. Conversely, um, if you want to reject a candidate, you can send a rejection email. Same type of nice features where the job title is being placed in, but this time it's saying not available. And you again can control the text at a site level so that if your HR has some EEO policies, you want to make sure you're not violating. Everyone's kind of communicating in a consistent manner. All right. So I'm going to go back to my control panel. And as I mentioned, we're going to use this NACE job that I created in advance to save time. And it's going to be the job that we follow through the life cycle. So I've created it. It is an on-campus federal work study job. It's active and listed, which means it's visible to the outside public. Other statuses that we have are pending approval, which, of course, if a supervisor created the job and now it's needing uh, an admin's approval, they'd be sitting here. Um, active not listed is for those jobs maybe you don't want to post uh, publicly because you already know who you wish to hire because you want to rehire a great candidate from last year. Those can be set in an active not listed status and you can just rehire from there. Um, inactive is, you know, maybe you don't want to use those jobs. They've kind of been deactivated for the time, but you don't want to have to create it down the road should it get resurrected. So it's in your, what I would call in the cloud storage unit. And any that you've deleted, we can um, house those and undelete them with ease if you, if you wish. So now I'm going to log out as the administrator. I, I have this job that's approved. And now I'm going to come in as a um, candidate. Um, we're first presented with these quick searches. So as I had mentioned, there's a powerful administrative tool within JobX that allows you to slice and dice how you wish to build quick searches over your job data. So that if you have your own custom job type populations that we talked about, like on-campus federal work study, off-campus, on-campus student employment, you can name them whatever you want. And when they click those, it's just going to slice and dice and bring those back. Um, that example where I said if you wanted to add that campus field, you could have east campus jobs, west campus, north. And then when they click that, it's just going to bring those jobs back for that particular um, campus. Same thing with um, category is a field in the job posting that helps you kind of generalize, uh, are these tutoring types of jobs? Are they clerical types of jobs? A lot of schools use that field to build quick searches so that if they want to just show all their tutoring jobs, it can just say tutoring jobs, and it's going to bring back all your math, English, you know, history tutoring jobs. 
if the candidate can't find what they want here, they can come into an advanced search where they can get really specific and kind of say, I just want to know, you know, what jobs are clerical or tutoring in nature, or I just want to see the jobs that are in the academic affairs office or music, or um, maybe I can only work during the summer, uh, wage, I, I need it to be greater than this, or hours, I need it to be between this, so that they can really get their best fit kind of jobs returned back back in the search. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to pick 25 most recently posted jobs so that I can get to that NACE job pretty quickly. But before I do so, I'm presented with some disclaimers. Now, these disclaimers can be customized uniquely by those different job populations. And why might that be important, you might ask? Well, there is a trend out there in the higher ed market where fraudulent employers are trying to get jobs posted on uh, you know, school boards. And when the person applies for it, they're told they're hired and they need to send in a $15 fee for their badge. They send in the fee and they realize that they've been, um, you know, duped. So they're, they're actually suing colleges. So that can't happen with JobX because they can't even get to the jobs until they agree to whatever custom disclaimers you've created. So for those off-campus jobs, a lot of our customers will say, hey, you apply at this job at your own risk. This is where they'll say you're responsible for transportation to and from. On the on-campus federal work study type disclaimers, Disclaimers, our schools will put in all those federal red work study regulations. You know, you, you have to be at least six credit hours. You, you can't work if you're supposed to be in class. Um, all those things so that once they finally agree to these disclaimers, now you can start to see those jobs behind those disclaimers. So protecting you from having any liability or, or lawsuits. All right. So now we're not only focused on making your supervisors and yourself as administrators efficient, but we're also focused on making sure that your candidates are efficient when they're interacting with the product. And we're also the only product that we are aware of in the market that allow your candidates to apply for multiple jobs with one single application. So not to worry, some schools say, oh, I don't want them to be able to just check these boxes for every single job and just flood all of our employers. We can set thresholds where they can't have more than five jobs submitted in a visit, um, however you wish to use that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply for a handful of jobs. I'm going to apply for our test NACE. That's an on-campus um, federal work study job. I'm going to apply for the staff position and maybe an on-campus non-federal work study job. And when I do so, I'm now going to, um, I'm going to apply. And when I do so, now, normally, they would be already logged in from your firewall and wouldn't have to see this, but I'm going to use this gentleman that I know is going to pass some of the validations, but not all. So this is that first app compliance area that I talked about earlier, where we're using data that came in either from a nightly file or a real-time API call based on whatever business rules you wish to set up. So in this demonstration, we've set up that if you're gonna apply for a work study job, you need to be awarded. And so in the file that came or the real time uh, call, it showed that this individual was not awarded. So it's not going to allow them to go forward for this job, but it is permitting them to go forward for these jobs. All this, cause, all this verbiage um, that is telling them why they didn't get to go forward can be customized. So if you wanna get real specific here and say, if you feel you're eligible, please contact Susie Chapstick at 904-555-1212. Um, and so super helpful. Now, before I go forward with him, I'm going to do that same thing real quickly, but I'm going to do it with somebody that I know is going to pass all their checks um, so that you can kind of see how that, uh, that process goes. And so hang with me real quick. I'm going to do this and apply for that on-campus federal work study, that staff position in here. And this time I'm going to use my test student, Roy Rogers. And that should get me into the application immediately because he did pass all those checks. 
So now it's telling him, I'm submitting this application for all these jobs at one time. If each of these jobs had job specific questions, like I mentioned about that volleyball coach job, those job specific questions will be at the end and the top will be representative of the default questions you as an administrator said everyone needs to answer. Now you'll see that there's some data pre-filled into the app. We can do some nice pre-fill from say the file that was coming in to make sure that they're not fat fingering their email address, which is super important throughout this life cycle. Rather we can pre-fill that data. But before I finish my, um, my application, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit submit. Just to show you, we have some real nice edit rich you know, instructions so that they understand which fields are required, um, I'm going to go ahead and fill those out. Uh, I can have, when you're creating your default questions, you can have unlimited type of fields. Uh, fields can include fields that are upload type fields. So in this example, it's a resume, but if you want a cover letter field, a letter of recommendation field, all those can be added to your default app. And then when they are uploading any type of document, we're going to perform a scan to make sure that they are not a vicious hacker that is introducing a macro, maybe in a Word document that's used in resumes um, so that a virus can be spread on the server that your data resides. So we we don't allow for any of that um, shenanigans. So now I'm going to submit my application. And now I'm placed on my applications dashboard, which is super helpful to reduce people coming into your office, you know, standing in line or calling saying, hey, I applied for a job. I have no idea what's going on. I haven't heard. Now they can self-serve. So if they're being considered for hire, it, it'll say pending hire approval. Um, if they are seeing a job that they really wanted and yesterday the not, the job openings was nine, but today it's one. And, and how does that happen? As again, we are a hire engine. So every time a job like this one has nine openings, every time someone's hired into it, this job opening is going to go down by one. And so as soon as it gets down to you hired the last person, JobX takes that job down from the site so that you don't have outdated jobs frustrating your candidates where they say, I went and applied and I talked to them. They said it's been filled for two months. So we don't have any worries there. If they found out, oh, I heard that's a, a terrible person to work for or whatever, they can withdraw their application, let that supervisor know why they're withdrawing, or they can send it with no email, and that application will be removed from consideration from that employer's queue. While I'm here, I'm going to flip over to job mail. So job mail is a great feature to help those students get best fit jobs for experiential learning purposes, for instance. So I'm trying to get a job, you know, aligned with my career. Uh, they can come in here and they can say, you know, I only want to know about jobs in these particular departments, or uh, maybe they only uh, want to be notified about clerical and technical assistant type jobs, or like uh, I said, maybe they can only work in the summer. Uh, in this case, they chose all, but maybe if they can only work in the summer, they, they can select that. And now job mail will run every single time a new job has been created. If any of these attributes that were selected are a match, they'll get that email saying this is a job that is you know aligned with your attributes. All right, um, we are gonna visit this dashboard in a moment. This is their dashboard where they can see any forms that are out onboarding forms that still need to be completed. Right now for this student, they don't have their I-9 done. They do have their W-4. Um, if you permit kids to work or other type of employees to work in more than one job, we can support that. So the individual can see all their jobs in one single location. If you're using Timesheet X as well, this is where they would come to enter all their time. And then any that they're being considered for hire are here. Um, if you are passing us award information, um, if you're only using JobX, some schools send us the original and the balance nightly so that they can have those award details right here at their fingertips. If they're using JobX and Timesheet X, 
timesheet X is uh, the actual uh, product that tracks award balances. So after the timesheet entries have been completed, they get um, run and sent to your payroll system. And then we reduce those award balances so that they always have a detailed uh, balance in front of them. And uh, if you're using Timesheet X, we also have a great feature that it prevents them from entering time when they're supposed to be in class proactively, uh, really getting folks out of hot water. But I direct your attention to this right here, because as we start to do the next step of hiring them, this is going to show where it's going to show that they don't have their I-9 and then we'll leverage that dynamic forms product to show the government form feature that we can offer uh, inside of your workflow of hiring. And it doesn't just support government forms. If you have a direct deposit form or any types of forms that you need, we can support those being injected before they get hired or being injected after they get hired, which is even better because now you can take the higher details and feed them into those forms and get them routed however you wish to get them routed. Uh, it can be fed into an EPAF um, for those banner schools. Um, and as I mentioned, RJ Sears screens and such. So now I'm going to log out as this uh, individual. And I just got an email as the employer telling me that someone applied for my job. So I'm going to go ahead and log in as the employer. Again, if they're an on-campus employer, they would be seamlessly brought into here. But if they're an off-campus employer, they'll need to use that standard login screen I just used. So I've come in. I want to look for my NACE job. And here it is. And indeed, there's an applicant. So now I'm going to come in. Here's my Roy Rogers. Uh, it's telling me new. As soon as I look at this applicant, the status will move uh, that new away so that you know if you have hundreds of candidates, which ones you've actually looked at or not. If you have hundreds of candidates, this flagging system is something that if you click this, it'll turn yellow and bring those that maybe you're interested to greet and interview up to the top. Um, and then you can use them also, you know, conversely, if you want to hit those all for the ones you don't care about, then you can send those reject emails that we saw earlier. But we can present the award amount here. The resume can be clicked here. If you have video resumes, we can allow those to be viewed. Um, but however you wish to get that customized on the site. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hire this individual. And now I see Roy Rogers is here, but this position has nine openings. So you can see nine slots here. So not only can you hire online applicants, but you can hire in mass so that if I'm in dining and I have 25 people, I just want to rehire. I don't want to have to have them go, you know, apply. I can come in here, put their information, and these next steps will happen for all nine at one time. So now it's gonna go and perform that higher validation, um, systematic higher validation, taking that eligibility check off of your su supervisors or yourself. And as you can see here, they don't have their I-9 completed as we saw over on the student's dashboard. But not to worry, we're still gonna allow them to move forward to hire the student. Now, one thing I do wanna say, whatever business rules you had set at app time can be different or the same here at hire. So a lot of our schools don't wanna check at time of app if the I-9 or W-4 um, are complete, but they do once it's time to hire them. So that can all be custom. And you can also define whether or not these business rules, if not, if not satisfied, result in a failure or just a warning. So if this had been configured to be a failure, you would not see just warning. You would see this red X and you would see a cancel here and they can't move forward. But we've configured this to go ahead and allow them to do that. And now we're seeing the hire contract. And just like the job template that we talked about, you can customize your hire contract to require all the fields that your receiving system on payroll needs to receive. Um, so we customize that differently by job population. So if certain fields for your faculty hires need to be different than your on-campus federal work study type hires, we can accommodate that.
And you'll see that a lot of data is already pre-filled, always trying to make sure that the data entry is minimal. This data coming over is from the application. This data here is coming over from the job. And we could do fancy things like some schools say, oh, I don't want them to be able to change the start and end dates to align um, outside of our term start and end dates. If that's how you want it, we can, we can just display these fields and really lock that down. Um, you can specify a primary contact. These are all dynamically built lists based on who's been granted access in that department. This job is being um, high or this hire is being created for. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this request. And now it's basically got a nice integrated email that's going to go out to your candidate telling them we're, uh, we'd like to hire you for this job, um, but we need you to complete some required forms. So go to your dashboard. So it's telling them all of the information. This all can be customized. We have nice pre-fill of the job title, the name. If you want the wage there, whatever you want pre-filled in these, we can accommodate. So now I'm going to email them. I'm going to log out as the, um, and I'm going to come in as my um, candidate. I'm going to log in as Roy Rogers. And when I do so, I'm now going to see, again, remember it said not complete, but now it's pink. And now it's giving me a link so I can go complete that. As soon as I click that, it's leveraging our dynamic form solution. You do not have to purchase our entire dynamic forms license to uh, accommodate this um, type of feature. Rather, each government forum can just be an add-on to your JobX um, annual license fees so that you can just leverage them for your onboarding forms only. Now, in this I-9 situation, we give you a nice content page that you can give some nice detailed custom instructions to what you want to tell your audience. Um, we ask a non-discriminatory question here just to try to find out if they're a non-citizen or a citizen. So as long as I say yes, it's going to go down our traditional flow. If I say no because I'm a non-citizen, it's going to behave very similarly to the, the normal I-9, but it's not going to require them to enter that SSN number in the field of section one, because of course they still need to get their uh, you know paperwork completed. And then you can come back as an administrator once that they have that paperwork and update that SSN in the online form, just like you would a paper form. But for time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. And now I'm going to be brought into an uh, exact replica of the I-9. Um, Unlike this form in dynamic forms and any other onboarding form, we can do real powerful things. So if you have onboarding forms that need to be, you want to use API real-time data feeds to put into the form so that the quality of the data in the form is extremely high, we can do that. We can do conditional routing based on data that's fed in from your system into the form, meaning like if one field on a form is uh, fed in with a data point of yes, it needs to route first to HR, then to payroll. But if it's no, then it needs to first go to financial aid, then payroll, then HR. So real fancy things like that. With the I-9, by law, we can't pre-fill data. Uh, they, they require that the individual update all of the details. So I'm going to go ahead and enter my Roy Roger information. Um, these are nice tool tips, kind of like TurboTax, so that it really takes this complicated form and makes it easy, easier to complete for these users. I'm going to go ahead. And if I were to actually try to submit this without satisfying those uh, required fields, it will not let me to move forward. So you're increasing that quality of the complicated form immensely. Uh, we have schools that are basically saying that they have orientations to kind of walk people through how to complete this form, not anymore because they have this intuitive kind of experience now. Now we have conditional field behavior. I'm going to say that it's a citizen. So as soon as I do that, it removes those fields that were needing to be answered had I chosen non-citizen. So conditional behavior to make sure that we are doing things accurately. We'll see that conditional uh, behavior in section two in a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to electronically sign. 
Now I have to, by law, show them the entire form. Now I can't do anything in these section two areas, but as a candidate, I'm going to continue to go forward. I have to show them all aspects of this form. Here, I'm going to say that I didn't have a preparer, but if I did have a preparer, I'd click this and then it would resolve the screen to say, how many did you have? And then if you said two, then it would only, it would refresh the screen and only have two areas to complete. But for time's sake, I'm going to say I did not. And then as soon as I submit this form, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look back here. It's writing real-time statuses back to your candidate so that now they see employment section completed pending approval. Now I'm going to bring up my other browser that I have over here because now I'm going to come into dynamic forms. Now, before I do that, I'm going to actually look at what it looks like for a supervisor. So the supervisor, not only the student, can watch the progress of where the form is so that if for some reason they don't complete like this one has it yet and you want to get someone hired, you can just come in and cancel that hire and offer the, the, uh, the job to somebody else. But as the supervisor, they can also see employment section, uh, employee section complete pending approvals. So let's get that section two done. So now I'm logging in as whomever your administrator would be for I-9. So if that's someone in HR, someone in payroll, or in career services, or you're on the hook for doing it in student employment or federal work study, we configure that access accordingly. You come into dynamic forms, and now you're going to see the queue. And indeed, here's our queue where my I-9 is sitting. Now, this product can be um, supporting your W-4 or any other onboarding solution. Those all would be forms here if you are leveraging them within JobX. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna come in here and quickly complete this form. Um, if I have any problems, I can return it back to them, but I'm gonna go ahead, choose my passport very quickly because we're running out of time. And uh, when I do this, this has been locked down. So if I would have chosen something in list B, it would lock down A and it would not let me save the form until I completed something in list C. I can uh, attach supporting documents that will stay with the form for the life of the form and can then be fed into an imaging solution if desired. If you don't have an imaging solution, then you can actually just have all of them in your in the cloud filing cabinet within dynamic forms. I am going to finish this up. And then one last thing we can do is allow for your um, workflow of hire to include an approval so that if you want to um, have an admin approve hires before they go live, um, we can accommodate that as well as if you need to um, if you need to also, let's go ahead and finish that. And we want to go ahead and keep going, submit that form. And now if I looked back at that, um, let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Now, if I look back and I refresh this um, student view or candidate view, it shows completed. Last step, we're going to go ahead and we're going to log out, come back in as the administrator in case you're a school that wants that um, hire to be approved. And come in here, approve JobX hires. Um, and there that job is. As the administrator, you can review all aspects of the hire, edit any details if they're wrong. If there are fields that are only the admin, like a fund or an org field or a chart of account to assign how this hire is going to be paid out, we can just show those to the admin. You can see all the history of what's happened with this hire thus far. You also can see what hires they're already in and pending action. We rerun the hire validation because between the time the supervisor created the hire and you're approving it, that eligibility may have changed. 
And now we're able to send out a nice detailed email telling them that they've been hired, either the supervisor, the employee, or both. And then you can add whomever else, maybe someone on payroll to tell them about that approval. We have amazing standard, we have uh, lots of um, reporting. This is a wizard that allows you to run unlimited ad hoc reports. So like if you're trying to um, run your Fizz app and you are looking to get your hire details, this wizard takes a non-technical user through the experience and it allows your supervisors to do that and they will only bring back data for the departments they've been granted access. Great, nice features and then you can export these reports in any layout. Here's just some screenshots of Timesheet X where we're doing some of the compliance checks, preventing them from entering time when they have a negative award balance, their SAP status isn't um, accurate, they don't have six credit hours or they were supposed to be in class um, unless a holiday or you know exception has been configured. So lots of powerful things here, keeping you guys compliant while also efficient. And I think that's it. I am at 1250. I apologize for running through those so quickly, but we definitely had a lot to cover. I'm gonna kind of go over Let's see. Uh, I have one question from Michael that says, is there a true screen integration for I-9 tracking? Um, so I'm not sure exactly what true screen integration means, but we are tracking the presence of that I-9 being completed or not. I'm not sure if that answers that question. Um, and then we can integrate the actual form into a imaging solution if necessary, or pull out the data within the I-9 form and feed back into any I-9 related fields on your ancillary systems on your side. Not sure if Michael, if that answers your question. I um, uh, got a question from Maureen in the chat. Um, do you work with Simplicity? So like I mentioned with um, Handshake, we can integrate with any solution. However, it's up to that other system if they allow for true data integration. For instance, with Handshake, they have a closed system, meaning we can't feed job postings to them from JobX, nor can we export um, massive amounts out of there to be in JobX. But with Handshake, we have things that we do to accommodate when schools are wishing to use both. So a lot of times they are, you know, able to create generic these types of jobs on Handshake and then actually pipe them over to JobX and allow for them to get real granular now and apply for multiple jobs with one single application like we saw. I'm not real familiar with Simplicity if they have those same kind of closed system situations, but if they are able to take a file of jobs from us because you want to use Simplicity as your you know, centralized gateway for all applicants, we can absolutely do that. Or the other way, if you want all your jobs entered into Simplicity and then those federal work study, uh, you know, non-federal work study be exported out into JobX, we can do that as well. Um, it's just really up to those, you know, uh, systems if they do allow for data integration or not. How do you see schools using JobX and Handshake? Well, does it seem to be worthwhile to have both? So we have a lot of schools that absolutely do have both. And the reason they have both is because they're really trying to, you know, Handshake's a great solution, predominantly used for most off-campus um, grad jobs, but they do do on-campus. Um, but I don't, I, you know, I don't wish to speak um, about an expert, uh, you know, as I am, but I think that, you know, the on-campus jobs for student employment and federal work study where there's very unique needs, that might be an area where they not, they aren't shining as much, but the way most of our schools would um, do it is they create that generic job that would say on-campus federal work study jobs, and then using that ability to have that app, um, external app management system link, 
um, they would link over that on-campus federal work study job generic listing immediately over to this right here. So it would be, they would put this link in and now they can leverage the disclaimer kind of feature that we talked about and, and leverage the mass um, applications. The other reason a lot of them use it is because they like that they can decentralize the job approval process outside of a career services um, de department if those federal work study and student employment divisions reside outside of career services so that they can be sure that those people who need to get that reviewed and make sure the job posting is compliant can do so. Uh-huh. Um yeah. Yeah. And um, like I said, I will be happy to, um, let's see, Alyssa says, we require students to have approved resumes before Handshake allows them to apply. Does JobX have? Absolutely. If we, if you already have an approved resume field being tracked on some resident system there, then we would include that in your nightly file or your real-time API feed. And it will just be a look at that resume present. Yes, no. If it's no, then they can't move forward and apply. If it's yes, then they can do so. Hopefully that answers your question, Alyssa. Um, I don't know if we went over this, but does the system let a student know when they are close to their total while? That's a great question. JobX does not do that. Timesheet X, absolutely. That's its rule, its role because it's tracking timesheet entries. And at the end of a pay period, we bring all those approved timesheets into whatever payroll layout file that you need, feed that over, and we reduce those earnings from the award balance so that we know exactly where they are and we can do warning preventatively to let them know when they're getting below $500 or, or 400. We don't speak in dollars to them. It would be number of, you know, hours more they can work. And then once they hit that, then we can do a hard edit that doesn't allow them to go forward until you bump up their award slightly to accommodate for those hours worked, or you can switch the account from which those earnings are paid out of to a departmental account if they still have um, desire to employ that student. Let's see, we have more. Um, so that uh, we are an E-Verify school. That, um, so that's a great, we do not integrate with E-Verify currently. It's just the form completion and we can feed data to E-Verify if necessary. Um, if you are E-Verify school, um, the great thing about Dynamic Forms is because you're E-Verified, the new changes with the I-9, you can have your kids upload their documentation in that first step. It would be a different um, flow than what you saw. And then they uh, ultimately can um, be looked at when you're doing the physical inspection um, and you don't have to have them actually, um, you know, give you the documents to upload those. That can all be done in advance in that new um, way I-9 is supported. And we also support what I failed to say is um, we also support that if you need a student to um, confirm and accept a job before it goes live, uh, we can do that too. I did not show that. Um, but if you require your student to accept a hire before it's, uh, we can do that as well. We have three more minutes. Not sure if anyone else has any questions or if I have any more. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see. Yeah, so Miss Liz, I think I've answered everything unless somebody wants to. Oh, let's see. Do we have explicitly? Sure, I've covered everything. Yep, I think that's it. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much, Tage, for um, sharing all of this wonderful information. And we hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their weekend. Thanks, Have a Liz. great day. Thank you all for right, joining take us. Take care. Bye bye. All right, bye bye.